Hey everyone, this is Bulba Trainer. Bloody hell, it's already December. Things are chugging right along with the channel, and I honestly want to thank all of you for being a part of that. I have been allowing my mind to wander a bit more and have expanded the initial scope of this channel, where I was mostly going to be doing top 10s into some more serious research and cultural studies of the Pokemon world. However, I still want to continue with my series Applied Pokology, where I make a list of Pokemon that would be helpful in a particular field, and get to justify talking about history and Pokemon in the same sentence. And that's why this week, I decided to add another chapter to that series. However, to keep the video a respectable length, I went from 10 to 5, which means I'll probably make a part 2 at some point in the near future. Before I dig in, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, as I may not always have a defined schedule of what I'm posting, but I almost always bring something new on the Thursday of every week. This week, I wanted to take a look at 5 Pokemon that I think would be best suited to the field of exploration. A pretty wide category, and not without its controversy. You see, I've always been fascinated with the sudden discoveries made by certain explorers in the past, not necessarily for the context under which they happened, but the sudden shift in knowledge and being the first person in thousands of years or even just decades to bear witness to something. When the Rosetta Stone was discovered, for example, and the moment that Jean-Francois Champollion realized that it would hold the key to deciphering hieroglyphics, or when the farmers in China first stumbled into the terracotta army of Qin Shi Huang, or when Robert Ballard first laid eyes on the Titanic after 73 years of being underwater. That experience of literally or figuratively touching the past has always interested me. Very frequently though, such discoveries come with their own problems. For example, Howard Carter may have discovered the tomb of King Tutankhamun, but there is evidence that he and a few others may have entered the tomb before they were supposed to and in violation of Egyptian law pocketed artifacts, or the still controversial case of the Parthenon marbles. Even those with only the purest of intentions can, by their very presence, damage these historic places as the sudden introduction of air or the humidity of human respiration can cause a more rapid decay. Even the wreck of the Titanic isolated as it is at the bottom of the ocean, has seen increased deterioration due to human factors surrounding its exploration and artifact recovery. Now this video isn't meant to make a statement of approval on ethically dubious exploration and discovery, especially as it existed under colonialism, but merely lists the Pokemon that would be helpful to those such as the Ruin Maniac, who was an in-universe example of the type of explorer I have in mind, or Zhang He people who are genuinely fascinated by history and exploration, and want to discover with the intent to preserve and learn, not own. One final note, like most of my lists, this one excludes legendary Pokemon, as I consider them to be cheating since their powerful nature goes against the context I want Applied Pokology to take. With that said, let's get into my top 5 Pokemon for exploration and discovery. Number 5. Zubat I want to start off in a weird place. Caves. There's beauty to be found in them, and I find myself in the odd middle ground of wanting to see something like this, but being terrified of tight passages like this. Caves, however, can also hold history and sometimes treasure. Not just the Disney kind either. Balamku Cavern is a cave in Mexico that has been left untouched for a thousand years. The plethora of items found inside may help piece together more of the way Mayans around Chichen Itza lived. There's also the famous Dead Sea Scrolls, which are some of the oldest existing manuscripts of the books that would later be included in the Bible, which was not always in the exact form it is today. Despite their name, the scrolls were not found in the Dead Sea, but about a mile away in some, get this, caves. Well, we need a Pokemon to help us get through these caves. Zubat is ideal in my mind. It's the Pokemon most evolved to handle a dark, tight cave. It's pretty small and moves around with the aid of sonar. If you're exploring a cave, you'll most likely have a flashlight, or a death wish, but things might still get confusing. Zubat, using sonar, can track where you've been, where you're going, and might be able to point out some ceramic jars that just might contain an even older version of a holy book. Zubat is the quintessential cave Pokemon and has been annoying trainers for decades. It might be time to give it some love and usefulness. Number 4. 
Exadrill. We're sticking to underground with this one, because caves aren't the only structures of note underground. Subterranean construction has certainly flourished in recent decades, but is surprisingly nothing too new. If you've ever played Assassin's Creed Revelations, you might know where I'm headed with this. There are underground cities and settlements that have existed for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and this is what we're looking for. The most famous of these, at least to my knowledge, are the series of underground settlements in Cappadocia. Most notable among them is Derin Kuyu, which may have been occupied as far back as 5,000 years ago, and at its height could house 20,000 people. All of this before mechanized methods of excavation and construction. Exadrill is our star digger here. It's small but powerful, with the deck saying it can dig as fast as 90 miles or 150 kilometers per hour. For the most part, the caves in Cappadocia were not filled in, merely sealed off, which means that locating other caves to increase our knowledge of the people who lived there needs to be careful. Too much damage to the network could cause part of it to collapse, and that's why we want Exadrill. For one thing, it already knows how to navigate underground mazes, as that's how it makes its home, and for another, its small size means that when it does finally bore into a cave system we're looking for or we want to explore, it won't do too much damage, and we can safely go exploring and maybe discover new subterranean cities. Number 3. Gardevoir Transitioning to a more familiar type of city, we have urban exploration. Rising in popularity due to the proliferation of quality cameras and cell phones and the fascination people have with the topic on social media, urban exploration is usually amateur exploration and investigation of ruins, sometimes but not always with a focus on modern ruins. One of my favorites are the YouTubers such as Sal, who covers dead malls. It may not be as exciting as discovering the secret to deciphering linear elamite, but it's still a fascination with history, and is sometimes far more tangible, because for some of us, these places were lively within our lifetimes, and now they are decaying, empty, giant monuments to the ephemerality of life. However, there are dangers to exploring such areas. By their very nature, such buildings may attract less than friendly types who may not at all be pleased to see you snooping around, they can be home to feral animals, and very frequently lack any maintenance, which makes them structurally unsound. Gardevoir, being an urban Pokemon, and with its desire to protect its trainer to sometimes unbelievable degrees, I've mentioned this before, but Gardevoir creating black holes would destroy everything in the immediate radius, including the trainer it's trying to protect. But let's just assume it's using psychokinesis. The protection would be invaluable. Someone with a knife in your childhood mall? Bubble of protection. Were you climbing the staircase in the old Waverly Mansion when the handrail broke? Gardevoir catches you in midair with its psychic powers and gently places you back on the ground. Exploring abandoned theme parks in China and a police drone is about to catch you? Gardevoir can send it flying in the opposite direction. No urban explorer should be without one. Seriously, I love Urbex videos, but it completely freaks me out how unsafe they are. Number 2. Charizard I normally don't include starter Pokemon on these sorts of lists. Like legendary Pokemon, I feel that starters are just too obvious. However, in this case, I'm combining practicality with aesthetics. Because typing be damned, Charizard is aesthetically modeled after a dragon. If you don't like me classifying Charizard as much, then imagine Hydreigon for this entry then. It's a dragon that can fly, despite not being the flying type. There's no denying that flight would be useful to a lot of explorers, but the sky itself also had an era of exploration when people were trying for higher, farther, and longer. Nellie Bly made a record-breaking trip around the world in 72 days. She was also a phenomenal journalist who feigned her way into an asylum to write an expose on the atrocities committed there, and this was in 1887. No one else was doing anything remotely similar. She hadn't exactly considered her circumnavigation a race, but it did have its setbacks, though none were her fault. Adding a Charizard to her party would have been a phenomenal way to get around the inadequacies of human inventions at the time. But even just flying to discover an uninhabited island or the ruins of a mountain civilization, Charizard would be practical. 
More than that, though, taking a dragon to push the limits of human knowledge and exploration just sounds awesome to me. Honestly, which sounds better, I discovered the remains of a Roman settlement in Newfoundland, or I discovered the remains of a Roman settlement in Newfoundland on the back of a dragon? Number 1. Avalug Winter is coming is a phrase that will never be usable again in casual conversation. Like, who are you gonna call, or into every generation a slayer is born? We can't just throw those phrases around anymore. People will always think that we're just being passe. But no matter how you announce it, the colder weather is coming in. Assuming you're watching this in the proper region and at the right time. And now is as good as time as any to admit that it's my favorite season. I especially love snow, that muted atmosphere the earth takes on while you're sipping your drinking chocolate, or the far inferior instant hot chocolate mix, can make you feel like you're the only person in the world. But then a car drives by, or you hear a shriek of laughter from your neighbors, and the illusion is shattered. I like to think that when John Davis first stepped foot onto Antarctica, he reveled in that howling silence. Or maybe it was Henrik Johann Bull, decades later, who took that first step. The records are muddled. But that isolation, that cold means that whoever the first ones were, they couldn't explore it very far. I imagine things would have been much different with an avalug. Trudging through snow and weather isn't easy because humans really aren't built to live out there. But imagine if you could bundle up in a few layers and sit on a creature that was meant to be there. Being made of ice and being rather large and flat-backed, Avalug was practically made to help people cross the frozen beauty that is the southernmost continent. It's one of the most difficult places to reach, and I'd imagine that a hot drink tastes even better when you're sitting back, watching the aurora australis, the night sky filled with nothing but the glittering jewels of the stars, as you explore a land so few have had the honor of visiting and discover, maybe not a lost civilization, but some sort of inner peace. Avalug is, without a doubt, my pick for a Pokemon to help one explore Antarctica. As I said, this would be the first part. There's still lots of terrain for us to explore and discover, though it won't necessarily be the next video. I like to keep things shaken up a bit, or it could be my ADHD. Make sure that you're subscribed, though, so you don't miss out when I do post it. Also, please feel free to comment with any ideas for alternatives you would have used. Since this video will be my first in December, I want to wish all of my viewers a happy and healthy holiday season, no matter what you're celebrating during this time. Things are rough, but I hope you can find joy where you can and that the rest of 2020 goes as smoothly as possible for you. I will see you all next time. Thank you for your support, and please stay safe.